Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. You're looking at a live picture here of the White House. The president momentarily is expected to address the nation. This was an impromptu um, uh, press conference that the, uh, we understand will address the IRS, and obviously in the wake of an unfolding scandal, we understand from some sources that there will be announcement of changes from the president, um, and we expect... Uh, uh, they will probably do with some people leaving the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, nonetheless, this has been a rapidly moving story. Um, the president initially at the beginning of the week said he needed more information. Um, subsequently, as we all have learned here, um, the IRS um, has reportedly targeted certain groups, uh, conservative groups uh, primarily, if not exclusively, including among them groups um, affiliated with the Tea Party. Uh, this on the heels of both uh, the furor over the AP story, um, as well as also uh, questions, uh, unfolding questions regarding Benghazi has made this a very difficult week, if not series of weeks or even month here for the White House. Um, and this story has brought it, if you will, to a head. So we expect to hear from the president shortly. And as we await the president, I want to tell you what we're going to have for you over the course of this next hour. We're going to be joined by Rob Astorino. Rob is uh, the Westchester County Executive, and uh, we're going to be talking about the housing desegregation lawsuit that's been in the headlines for so long. There have been developments, and the county executive uh, will fill us in on those. In addition to that, um, we're also going to be joined here uh, by a guest who can speak firsthand about the recent spate of sexual assault, uh, not only cases, but revelations um, that persist uh, within the military right now. And our guest herself, uh, a victim of uh, sexual assault in the tailhook scandal, will talk about why this has been such a persistent uh, scourge. And we'll also talk regional politics as well, developments in the race for New York City mayor here. We're going to get into not only some of the numbers and the dollars and cents, but also some of the developments. And it looks more and more likely that uh, Anthony Weiner will be getting into the race. We'll be talking about that as well. But as I said, the president will be delivering a statement on the situation regarding the Internal Revenue Service. You're looking right now at a live picture on the left. You can take that up full from the East Room. Um, we're not sure as to whether or not there will be questions after it, but uh, uh, nonetheless, we expect uh, to hear this uh, shortly. Uh, for any of those who've been watching Jay Carney, the press secretary, uh, go through what has been basically uh, becoming a human pinata for the last week, the answers um, have been incomplete um, and the rationales um, harder and harder to uh, explain why groups that are, have, were applying for nonprofit status through the IRS, why certain groups were singled out um, apparently for political affiliation, so or at least uh, political leanings, I should say. That all said here, um, we expect to see and hear some changes. Um, the Attorney General Eric uh, Holder said about this unfolding case that anybody who has broken the law will be held accountable. Um, but he also went on to tell lawmakers today it's going to take time to determine if, in fact, there were any criminal wrongdoing. I don't expect that threshold will apply to changes that the president is expected to be making today. As we heard, there will be changes that the president will be announcing. Um, and if you read between the lines, what that usually means in Washington is some people are going to go. I believe termination, uh, singular or plural, uh, may be announced today. Usually they say those in the form of a, a resignation. Uh, nonetheless, though, uh, somebody's going to be paying a price for uh, what went down at the IRS. Now, a report yesterday from the Treasury Inspector General said ineffective management at the IRS um, allowed agents to improperly target Tea Party groups for more than 18 months. This story also, this story also came to uh, the attention, uh, apparently, and that's one of the questions a while ago, uh, before finally uh, action was taken here and this became public. So. Uh, there will be many questions I don't think that will be resolved simply tonight here, but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, there has even been calls for an uh, independent prosecutor. Uh, some people uh, on the Republican ranks have said that they don't trust Eric Holder, um, the attorney general, to be uh, uh, the proper person to expedite the investigation in this. Uh, they may want somebody independent and from the outside, whether or not that happens, we'll see. Uh, but. Um, 
The uh, Attorney General also told the House Judiciary Committee that the investigation will not be about parties or ideologues. Apparently, not all members of that committee were satisfied um, that that's going to be enough. Now, what these committees are going to be looking into and investigating is that the IRS, as I said, singled out Tea Party and other conservative groups during both the 2010 and 2012 election periods. Now, one panel on Friday, they're going to be hearing from the acting IRS commissioner, Stephen Miller, um, and expect Mr. Miller will not be uh, getting a warm embrace during those hearings. Another one um, panel has a hearing next week, and what they'll do is they'll focus on the former IRS commissioner, Doug Schulman, as well as Lois Lerner, who heads the division that oversees the tax-exempt organizations. Now, we're hearing two different things that seem to have um, uh, at least enough co corroboration that people are comfortable with the reporting of it. One is, as I said, that apparently any group that had the words Tea Party uh, within their title or had any connection to it that were applying again for that nonprofit status uh, through the IRS, those were singled out. So why that was allowed to persist apparently after they were told to cease and desist on that when this came to a, the attention more than a year ago, that's going to be one of the first questions asked. The second issue is also going to be that apparently some groups that applied for nonprofit status, they just gave up altogether after waiting for a year, year and a half, some said even two years, before they could even get a, a message from the IRS or an answer from them. So there's the questions of inefficiencies, ineffectiveness, and then also obviously the questions that have been burning up in Washington, whether or not there was a partisan politics at play. Nobody believes that this goes to the White House or any directives came from the administration to do this. And for anyone who is confused, the IRS um, or the president is not, in fact, he's legally prohibited from coordinating or directing the IRS um, uh, to be taking any action on his behalf. So uh, all those things as a backdrop play obviously into a political climate right now where we are seeing with repeated frequency Partisan politics bring everything to gridlock. We saw it as it related to uh, even basic background checks on guns. We're now seeing it as it relates to immigration reform. Issue after issue, we're seeing this play out, and this will only complicate things even further as questions, um, and many legitimate, not just partisan, are being asked as to how could this have happened? How could this have gone on for so long? And obviously the question that's always in Potomac, who knew what? and when. All right, I'm going to bring in Andrew Whitman right now as we wait to hear from the president. Um, and uh, Andrew, uh, there's a reason why the president called the press conference today. Uh, there has been mishandling from the White House this story. Uh, I even saw um, former press secretary uh, for this president, and they're always in lockstep saying, yeah, you know, to say that the president uh, was disappointed um, or that he's impatient uh, about something. And something I would say uh, to my nine-year-old, that was uh, Robert Gibbs who was saying this earlier. He needed to uh, really be livid about this much earlier than he was. Uh, Gibbs went on to say, and he also said that, you know what, it shouldn't be so hard, or another's I should say, uh, to just fire uh, some people for this kind of gross um, negligence. So uh, I expect you're going to see a very... Uh, a different tone from the president than we saw at the beginning of the week. Well, in the one comment that he's had publicly about the IRS scandal, and that was when he was meeting with, uh, doing a press conference with David Cameron, the British Prime Minister, earlier this week, and got one question on this. He was already showing a fairly short fuse when it came to the IRS. Uh, if any wrongdoing had happened, he said that he would make sure that we got to the bottom of it and make sure that it's prosecuted. But this will really be his first on-the-record uh, statement to the American people about this. So, you know, he's got a little bit of a tightrope walk to, to navigate here. He's got to reassure people that the administration is going to get to the bottom of this, while at the same time reminding people or trying to reassure them that the IRS does work and that it's not yep. singling out one group of people or one political cause. Apparently this afternoon he met with Treasury uh, Department officials uh, to try and get uh, the latest in terms of what they found out so far. And apparently uh, this coming um, from um, uh, the White House and also from the meeting, that the president will be trying to make sure people are held accountable for their conduct and for their activities. And just as Andrew said, that the IRS, who's always the most unpopular agency in uh, the federal government, regardless of who's president here, um, that uh, 
the public can believe that this is not a partisan driven um, organization with political agendas. And, um, that's one of and the it's all, and, and, and as we said, Andrew, this story fed into um, the worst assumptions of Washington, which has been um, that this government uh, is too big and that uh, the government, um, as it grows larger and larger, um, targets uh, people who have dissent. And that's why, I mean, in many ways, people have said that um, there has been a, um, uh, in many ways, a, you know, attack on government broad general for the last five years, and it's fed into it. And you were seeing right here in, um, what uh, Jim, uh, Mike Allen and Jim Vanderhei over at Political said, which is, Andrew, that this really brings to the head three problems. The three biggest stakeholders that it relates to Washington are the press, who on the heels of the AP story are already livid at the administration. Uh, two, you have Republicans who before the president even took office uh, were lying in wait for him. And then three, um, where you've got Democrats, establishment Democrats, who feel that the president has kept them at arm's length here, hasn't helped them, and in many ways uh, hasn't done some of the things that they thought they would have gotten from a Democratic president. So you have nobody really lining up behind the administration at this point, which with the agenda that this president has, makes things go from really difficult to next to impossible to get things done. Well, considering the proliferation of scandals we've seen in the last couple of weeks, we have the revisit of Benghazi. Uh, and all of that that's been happening. We have the AP story that, as you said, has offended a lot of members of the media or news organizations, and now the IRS, which people can relate to so well, as you were pointing out, that any time the IRS or people get involved with the IRS, there's a feeling that it's the government versus me. And this leads to some of these other fears that we were talking about. Think of how many of the major political issues of the last couple of years have been about uh, the concerns of an overly large government, health care reform, and uh, are too many medical responsibilities being turned over to the government. That, that's at play here. Look at the debate that we had over guns not too long.